What if you were told that a private company would one day challenge the monopoly of government-funded space organizations, deploying more rockets into space in half a year than all global space agencies combined? A bold question indeed, which brings us to the incredible story of SpaceX. Musk founded SpaceX in 2002. He had a visionary goal, to make space exploration more accessible and eventually to enable human life on Mars. However, his ambitious dreams were met with widespread skepticism. At the time, the idea of a private entity disrupting the space sector was, at best, considered a fantasy. The industry was dominated by governmental agencies like NASA in the US, Roscosmos in Russia, and the European Space Agency in Europe. These organizations had the financial power, the expertise, and the experience of decades of operations, seemingly leaving little room for new entrants. SpaceX started with a small team, operating out of a warehouse in El Segundo, California. The early days were challenging as the team grappled with the technical and logistical complexities of space technology. Musk had put a significant portion of his personal fortune into SpaceX, but the company was still operating on a shoestring budget especially compared to the well-funded governmental agencies they sought to compete against. In the early years, failure was a common occurrence for SpaceX. Their first rocket, the Falcon 1, had three failed launches before it successfully delivered a payload to orbit in 2008. These failures pushed the company to the brink of bankruptcy, and many industry observers doubted that SpaceX would survive. Yet Musk was undeterred. He injected his personal funds into the company, keeping the operation afloat. In 2008, when Falcon 1 finally succeeded, it was the first privately funded liquid-fueled rocket to deliver a payload to orbit. This significant achievement was followed by an even bigger milestone. In December of the same year, NASA awarded SpaceX a $1.6 billion contract to fly cargo to the International Space Station. The critics were proved wrong. Not only did SpaceX survive its early trials, but it also emerged as a serious competitor in the space industry. Fast forward to 2023, SpaceX aims not to fit into the established norms, but to surpass them and break records after records. After achieving a remarkable 61 launches in 2022, the company has embarked on an even more breathtaking trajectory in the first half of 2023. Musk set a target for the company at the beginning of the year. An ambitious 100 Falcon launches for 2023. This aim marked a considerable increase from the 61 launches accomplished in 2022. In the first half of the year alone, SpaceX launched a staggering 44 rockets, including 41 Falcon 9, 2 Falcon Heavies, and 1 Starship. This achievement becomes even more astonishing when compared to other countries' space programs. For instance, China conducted 25 launches mainly using the Changzhang rocket family, Russia carried out nine launches, and India managed four successful launches. Europe, Japan, and Korea also contributed to the global tally, but none came close to matching SpaceX's output. Apart from SpaceX, in the US, Rocket Labs, the company behind the Electron stands as the second largest, having completed five successful missions. The absence of Blue Origin from this list is noticeable due to an in-flight anomaly in 2022 grounding its new Shepard rocket. Looking at these figures, it becomes clear that SpaceX currently reigns supreme in the rocket industry. Reaching 100 launches in a year is a big goal for SpaceX. It means they would need to send a rocket into space about every 3.65 days. When you think about all the work it takes to prepare a rocket for launch, this is really amazing. In the first half of 2023, SpaceX has been very busy. They have been launching rockets about once every 4.05 days. That's nearly two launches per week, is not something you see every day in the space industry. One reason why SpaceX might be able to do this is because of a change they made to the Falcon 9 rocket's second stage nozzle. The second stage nozzle is a part of the rocket that helps it move in space. In April 2023, SpaceX introduced a new design for this part, which makes it easier and faster to build. When we look at SpaceX's plans for 2023, they have 31 more launches scheduled. This doesn't even include any extra launches they might do for their Starlink mission, which is a project to send lots of satellites into space to provide internet service. With all of this activity, it seems possible that SpaceX could reach their goal of 100 launches this year. 
While SpaceX is breaking records and reaching new heights, the rest of the rocket industry is grappling with a crisis. Many medium and heavy launch vehicles are being retired, and the remaining ones are fully booked. At a time when the COVID-19 pandemic caused lots of companies to shut down or cut jobs, SpaceX showed strong growth. From 2018 to 2020, the money made in the global space industry grew from $323 billion to $345 billion. This growth happened even with the problems caused by the pandemic, and SpaceX had a big role in making this happen. Many companies had a hard time dealing with the problems caused by the pandemic. They had to let go of employees, cut their budgets, or even close their businesses. But SpaceX was different. Instead of cutting jobs, they created more. Right now, over 10,000 people work at SpaceX. These jobs help the economy by giving people money to spend. They also push other companies to create more jobs and pay higher wages to compete with SpaceX. In comparison, other companies in the space industry struggled. For example, Blue Origin, one of SpaceX's main competitors, had to stop its new Shepard rocket from flying after an in-flight problem in 2022. This problem slowed down their progress and made it hard for them to compete with SpaceX. But the company's influence extends beyond providing employment opportunities. SpaceX is leading the charge in the development of new technologies. Recently, a Falcon 9 rocket made history by launching for a record-breaking 16th time, lifting off from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida and carrying 22 of SpaceX's Starlink satellites toward low Earth orbit. After its successful launch, the first stage booster came back to Earth, landing on the deck of the SpaceX drone ship. Just read the instructions in the Atlantic Ocean, about 8.5 minutes after liftoff. This level of reuse is unheard of in traditional rocketry and reflects the essence of SpaceX approach. The Falcon 9's upper stage, meanwhile, continued its mission, carrying the 22 Starlink V2 Mini satellites into low Earth orbit. These V2 Minis represent a new and more potent version of SpaceX's broadband service satellites, providing four times the capacity of previous iterations. This level of innovation and efficiency is emblematic of SpaceX's operations. It reduces costs and makes space more accessible, leading to an increased demand for the company's services, an expanded customer base, and higher revenues. That's it for today's video, folks. If you enjoyed watching, please give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.